Uh, yeah, this is Dave from CheapBooks.com playing World of Tanks. The tank I am playing is the M4A1 Revolories, I guess. Uh, this is a French Tier 8 medium tank. The map is Murovanka. Uh, now, this is going to be an interesting game for me. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive behind the enemy team. I'm going to flank them from the rear. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do it. On this map, uh, one of the ways to do it is to head for the enemy spawn. Uh, with the theory being that the enemy team is leaving the spawn, so therefore uh, there's uh, less of a chance of of encountering tanks at the enemy spawn. Ready to fire. So you can see I got a lucky shot on that bat chat. And you want to hit it on the side armor as much as possible. Anytime you have a chance to hit any enemy tank on the side, you want to take that shot. Uh, you can use uh, a lower tier tank can kill a higher tier tank. That tank uh, is was oh no wait that was a tier eight bat chat it wasn't a tier ten bat chat. Uh, but you can do damage to higher tier tanks by hitting them on the side or on the rear. Uh, so it's a strategy you're going to use. Now what I'm doing if you're going to take a look at this map here, you're going to notice that where I am is there's these houses here and there's a road to my right and a road to my left. And I decided to go through the houses, not on the roads, because I, you're going to get more cover going between the houses. There's going to be more trees and uh, more things to protect you if you get spotted. And you'll notice that I'm occasionally stopping at different bushes. When I drive my tank, I drive from bush to bush, which is why I'm currently in a bush. And I'm going to find the next bush that I'm going to head to. Uh, it, it does give you a little bit of added cover. So as I'm driving, I'm looking for more bushes to drive to. Oops. Okay. Now you'll notice that the enemy spawn is right next to me. And there's nobody here. They all left. And I'm continuing to drive through the bushes. So they left the spawn. I was able to get right behind them. I'm going to go all the way to the red line. Because you want to get as far away uh, from the enemy as possible. Because I'm going to take advantage of the fact that some of them are already spotted. And I'm going to try and shoot at them without them spotting at me. Uh, so I want to be as far away from them as possible. You'll note that right now they're outside of my spotting range, so it's safe for me to shoot at those tanks, with the exception of the fact that the artillery can spot me. And this is where you get lucky. Uh, we've got this uh, Object 263, uh, the T-54, and I believe there's going to be a Scorpion also. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to have the luck that I want to have. But these are the types of shots you want to have. You'll notice that I'm uh, making sure that I'm taking advantage of any cover. And I zoomed out. And the reason why I zoomed out is because I want to see what's going on around me. There's danger very close to me. I also use the auto-aim, and when you use the auto-aim like this, you have to wait until the target is not moving if you want to increase the chance of hitting it. This would be a perfect example where I could shoot a high explosive round, uh, save a little bit of money, and do damage to that tank. Now, they don't know what's going on. They're, they're probably in a panic stage right now. You know, they're wondering, why are they getting shots from the side? So my targets have dried up. I'm relying on my allies to spot for me, which means I gotta, I gotta go somewhere. Uh, you'll hear me say this: you want to make decisions immediately. I don't sit around and wait. I hunt down the enemy. When there's nothing to do, I make a decision as to what to do. Now there's an example where I didn't have good luck. I missed a key shot on that. Well, I didn't miss the, the shot, but I didn't penetrate. And there's another example where I did not penetrate. But if I had used a high explosive round, I probably would have done damage against his weak armor. So there's the first SPG unit. And they're no match for...
uh, for my tank. However, with a typical tank, it's going to usually take two shots to destroy them. And the problem is his buddies are obviously right next to him. So now I got to worry about these three SPGs. And I've been spotted, so now the Scorpion is defending his team. You'll notice that I'm low in the terrain. I'm in a low position, which means I've got all these hills around me. That's a beautiful shot going through the air. So I've got a low position. You don't want to go over the hills. You want to go around the hills. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here in the low position. And when I want to shoot, I'm going to move forward. And I don't really need to defend against these guys because they're not going to be able to aim their guns at me. But normally I would go forward uh, to shoot and then reverse while I'm reloading. And while you're reloading, because that scorpion knows where I am, you want to point your gun towards the scorpion so that you have your stronger armor pointed towards the scorpion. Right now the scorpion's seeing the side of my turret, which is weaker. You want to point towards the danger. So you can see that one of the SPGs died. This other one, I don't think this GW is going to have any success. But while I'm reloading, I reversed because now the GW is aiming his gun at me. I'm going to move forward to take that final shot. So as I said, I, I missed a couple key shots here. Must have been four or five shots that should have done damage. Fired that gun, did no damage. This guy's going to have a bad day. Now I'm going to show you an overview of the battlefield. The score is 10 to 2. I got two kills. I helped um, with one, two, three, four, five. I helped destroy five tanks. So I helped destroy a third of the enemy team. The two that were in the distance and the three SPGs. The east side, our team did not win. So uh, I, I probably had a major impact on the game on the west side. Now you'll see what I was telling you about. Uh, he shot my weak uh, turret armor because I was aiming my gun away from him. And it's a technique you want to remember. If you know that someone might shoot at you, make sure you point your stronger or armor towards the threat. I have the feeling he's going to shoot at me again because I got a long reload. I'm going to reverse. Uh, he got alive with seven hit points. So I reverse to a low point make it difficult for the scorpion to hit me. You'll notice that I'm going to be firing high explosive rounds at that uh, E-75, which should easily do the damage. Uh, unfortunately, someone else damaged him. I'm sorry, someone else killed him off right at the point where I took my shot at him. So you can see that must be like seven lousy shots that I had. I switched to the uh, APCR for some reason. It might have been a mistake. Okay, so that's uh, 14 kills. The game is almost over. There's one tank left in the game. Uh, I got 2,600 damage, 1,000 spotting damage. I was responsible for uh, the death of five enemy tanks. And I absolutely turned the tide... Um, uh, for the game. I helped my team out considerably. Uh, now we got to find that Object 140. Um, one thing that I do, I've played a lot of games where we lost because somebody failed to cap. And I have a rather slow tank. It does 40 kilometers, but it's not the fastest tank. So when it's convenient to cap, I always cap. It's better to cap and take your winnings now than to miss the opportunity to cap and lose everything. You lose a lot when you fail to cap. What he is doing this enemy tank is not really the right strategy for him. And you can see that's the game, another shot that uh, didn't get me anything. I ended up with 3,100 damage, uh, 1,285 spotting damage, two kills, very important key game. That's the strategy that I like to play on this map 
uh, when I'm not playing a fast uh, spotting tank. Let's go. Uh, yeah, this is Dave from cheapbooks.com playing World of Tanks. The tank is a Skoda uh, T40. This is a Czechoslovakian uh, tier 6 medium tank, and the map is Sand River. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive through the little town area. You'll notice on the minimap I'm pointing the dash line towards the town. I'm pointing my gun in the direction I want to drive. Pointing it on the map first, and then I head in the direction that my gun is pointing. I want to make it clear that even though I'm going to go through the town, which is going to allow me to spot enemy tanks and, and flank them, I've played the other positions. I've played going around the outside and up in the mountains. I did that when I was a new player, but I'm not a new player anymore. So I take the more difficult routes. And now here's an example. We got this Hellcat over here. He is sniping down this middle river area. He has no idea that a tank is coming the position that I'm taking on the upper level. So he's not even looking in the direction that I'm coming from. And I decided to shoot manually. I, I may have clicked. That might be an example where I did the auto-aim by mistake. And I have the feeling that the Hellcat is going to go back to that spot over and over. So you'll notice I got a shot on that OI. I don't think I'm going to do much damage to him. But he's in a sniping position up on the ridge. Doesn't realize that the position that I'm in, I can hit him. Uh, most people playing there believe that they're safe. But from my position, I can absolutely do damage to him. You really want to go for the turret if you can. And I'm going to shoot at him even if I don't see him. You'll see that the shot suddenly disappeared, which leads me to believe he's still there. Okay, so now he's probably gone. I'm going to go through town. You want to avoid knocking things down because you need it for protection. You want to avoid... Like, I just took a, a look through the snipe scope to see if I can shoot at him. You want to avoid doing that. L looking at the minimap, it's obvious that the Type 58 is on the other side of a dune and that it would never have been possible for me to shoot at him. So trust the minimap. Make your way through. Try not to knock anything down. I absolutely knock trees down. Knocking a tree down can give you additional cover. It's better to get the additional cover than to worry about someone seeing a tree knocked down. I'm going to look around and see if I can get a shot on that guy. I can. But just barely. They have weak armor on the roof, so you can shoot high explosive rounds and hit the roof of the tank. I knocked a bunch of trees down. gives me a little bit of extra cover. I don't know why that tank is there. He's probably behind a dune and a building. But right now, look, I'm, I'm on the front line. You know, my team is behind me. But now I'm in a really strong position. I can't really advance much further, even though I will. Uh, there's only a little bit of cover left in front of me, so it's going to be very dangerous for me to advance. But I haven't been spotted, and I'm going to keep the enemy pinned down. They can't really move around. They can't be as mobile as they want to be right now. So I'm spotting the KV-85, which is causing him to have uh, received some incoming fire. I wanted a better view, which is why I continued to advance. Got to be very careful. You have to know where you can hide, where the enemy is. You need uh, whatever you can to protect you. I got 941 spotting damage, which is pretty good for this tier. And there's the uh, Jackson. Oh, it was the Jackson. I confused it with the Hellcat. But you notice that he can't sit out there and snipe anymore. Oh, well, it looks like they must... I don't know if they spotted me. It looks like someone took a shot at me. Yeah, they must have spotted me. I don't know why. Maybe the Sixth Sense went off and I didn't notice it. Okay, so the Hellcat is dead. I got 1,300 spotting damage. I'm making a run for their territory. Shoot it whatever I can along the way using the auto-aim. 
look for a safe place, which is right there. I'm going to go over the dune. I'm going to sit around, take a quick look to see what's going on, where my allies are. I've got an ally going with me. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, back him up. If he advances, I'm going to go two on one. I'm using the dead tank to protect me as I go out and take a look. So the other tank said I'm going to take this uh, high angle here and allow me to do a little bit of spotting and sniping. 1600 spotting damage. Let's find another target. Ready to fire. No luck with that. I'm constantly turning the auto aim on and off. Just because I have it selected doesn't mean I'm going to fire with the auto aim on. You'll notice I did not take a good uh, path getting up this hill. Uh, missed a chance on that tank, unfortunately. But he did something uh, that may have been a little stupid. He made it easier for me to shoot at him, this VK over here. But looks like I missed a shot. Score is 12 to 5. Uh, so now the smart thing to do would be to cap on the enemy base. that is one kill for me. When you cap, you force the enemy to make decisions. You force them to retreat to the base. Uh, they might have to split their flank. Like th They might have five tanks and two of them have to return to base. So it, it eases up on your team. And while they're traveling, they can't often they can't shoot at anybody so you take the guns out of the game for a short period of time capping is really important in the game so i wanted to show you this is a technique that i use which was advancing through the town i do it frequently it's a very safe maneuver uh which is why i did it and i wanted to show you in this game uh which we won 15 to 6. Time to roll out. uh yeah this is dave from cheapbooks.com playing the panther m10 this is a german tier 7 medium tank. It's actually a German Panther that is disguised to look like an American M10 tank. Uh, now if you watch my videos you'll know I like to play in the middle of the map. People are afraid to go in the middle of the map, but from the middle of the map you maximize your spotting ability and you can shoot in all directions, uh, which means that you can shoot at targets all over the place. Uh, but you also can take incoming fire from all over the place. So you have to know the safe way to drive, uh, how to hide. Now, what I'm probably going to do is turn left over here, and I'm going to stay somewhat low. And I'm going to take advantage of uh, these little dunes here and work my way through uh, towards the enemy territory uh, in the northwest corner. Uh, when, you, For example, we've got this VK. If those tanks are there and I need to shoot at them, I'm going to shoot at them. We've got a T-37. If I can shoot at those, I'm going to shoot at those. And I'm going to make my way. The enemy tends to go down way in the distance off over there. And if I can shoot at them over there, I will shoot at them there. Uh, so let's see what happens. Oh, this is going to be a great game. And you're going to learn a lot about how to have fun playing World of Tanks by watching what happens in this game. Now, I want to get to that corner as quickly as possible. This is not a safe position. It's very risky going through here. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned about tanks that might be heading um, to where the T-37 is, so that's why I'm going through a little bit more cautiously. I don't want to get spotted. Okay, so you see that there's an enemy tank there. Very difficult for me to damage his tank. However, I also have a philosophy. If you got the ammo, take the shot. So the T-37's dead, and that T-32, he's going to have trouble. He's going to have trouble. Now, once you get across to this point, you've got a lot of safe places where you can hide. The T-32, he's a... Uh, I believe it's a... Is it a Tier 8 heavy tank or it could be uh, yeah it might be he's not he's not playing in a good position and neither is the T29 T29 is a tier 7 T29 is an awesome tank the very powerful tanks they should be pay, playing a more aggressive position but the fact that the T29 and the T32 are back in the backfield tells me 
that they could be bots or they're just not really good players. And we're going to take advantage of it. Uh, part of it is going to be me being aggressive against these guys, and part of it is my teammates are going to have open shots on these guys, and we're going to gang up on them. So it's if you look at the minimap, you're going to see that the position I'm in, not a usual position for a person to play on this map. I went very f deep on the front lines, I'm a front line player, and I'm trying to find a safe position because I am a medium tank and there's two heavy tanks over there that have mostly full health. I'm a little bit concerned, I want to make sure uh, that the RD, that was a maneuver to avoid the artillery. Uh, so I'm coming in again uh, and I'm going to sneak up on them. I'm not afraid of playing against other tanks. You can see, found one of the Arties, and he's going to be gone soon. Okay, that's my first kill. I was not spotted. So now I have this little ridge over here, well, this little area where I'm going to be able to protect myself and the T-29 can't really do anything. And When I need to spot him, I'm going to peek out and spot him and keep in mind there's a T-32 on the other side there. I think he's going to advance to that spot which is going to put me in danger, but I can just drive forward and, and I'll be safe. I'm going to spot the guy, let my allies work on him, and if I have a chance and, or an opportunity to go after him, I'm going to go after him. Now, if you notice on the mini-map, the enemy tanks are in the south, and they're starting to take uh, position, advancing uh, closer towards our base. And our team is in the north, but we don't have uh, all heavy tanks. We've got a little bit more diversity. Okay, so there's the T-32. I saw that danger was coming, so I had to reposition. You want to move close to the enemy. You'll hear me say it often. You want to get as close to the enemy as possible. By getting closer to him, it's harder for him to shoot at me. If I had reversed, it would be easier for him to shoot at my tank. But getting closer to him means he has to expose himself more in order to shoot at me, which makes it more dangerous for him. My allies will be able to go after him. So I'm going to get close to him and position myself in a safe uh, position between both of these guys. And I noticed that the T-32 backed off. And you can see I, ha I just slip right through and that's it. Score is four to three. So the TVP decided to go after the T-29. And when you're in this type of situation, you want to go two-on-one as much as possible. The T-29 can only point his gun at one tank, which is a TVP. So if the TVP is going head-to-head, -head, I'm going to sneak in, do as much damage as I can, and I'm not going to worry so much about the uh, T-29 shooting at me. You want to take advantage of the opportunity now. Get rid of that T-29, keep your TVP in play, and then gang up on the T-32. Uh, if it were T-29 and T-32 versus me and the TVP, it would be two-on-two. Two. Uh, they have an advantage. But if me and the TVP uh, conquer them, divide and conquer them, we have an advantage. And that's the strategy. So you'll notice that I'm using the auto-aim so that I can quickly check the danger for the T-32. And I'm watching his gun. I notice that he was reversing and that he can't. Uh, shoot at me even though I'm spotted. So I'm watching that T-32 after every shot. And I'm always reversing uh, for two reasons. Number one, to avoid any possible incoming artillery. And number two, because it's safer for me to reverse. And I'm still going to kill this guy. You'll notice that my gun does not do a lot of damage. It only does 130 damage per shot. It would take me 10 shots to kill that uh, that T-29, so it's very dangerous for me. So now we're going to go after that T-32. You can see it's going to be a three-on-one situation. I only move far enough to fire my gun. As soon as I was able to fire the gun, that's when I stop. I don't expose my vehicle anymore. You'll notice that this is a horrible uh, uh, position in terms of angling. However, look at that gun for that T-32. He's not aiming at me, so it doesn't matter. But I pay attention. You notice I changed the angle of my tank. 
I put the gun over the corner so that now I have a proper angle. If, if that tank does decide he wants to shoot at me, I'm in a good angle and his gun is still pointed away from me. Now you ask, why did I move forward? Part of it is to avoid artillery, and the other reason why is that Cromwell is circling around the T-32, and I need to get into a better position because I don't want to accidentally hit the Cromwells. So I either have to move forward or I have to wait for him to pass. In this case, I have to wait for two tanks to pass. So they killed off that tank. It's six to three. And don't let the score surprise you. Um, so we cleaned up on the north got two kills uh we took out their artillery uh a lot of my team is still at our base not a good sign i don't take that as a good sign i see it as a sign of weakness that tank's trying to run away he's gone now i could have had three or four kills here but uh my allies were getting the kill shots in scores seven to three I avoid going into the lower area. You have an advantage in this upper area here, and the reason why is because of, of these little mounds over here. These structures uh, offer you protection, and you can go and shoot whoever's in the middle and quickly hide behind here. If you don't do it, you have to go to that midpoint, and you have a little bit less control over how you control uh, the area that you're shooting at. And from over here, you can head to the town, which gives you a lot of good cover. I seem to recall I missed a lot of shots on this tank. Wasn't able to get uh, the damage I was looking for. Now, I still take those shots, even though he's just about to disappear over the edge. Better to shoot high explosive rounds when you're shooting and you might hit the roof of the turret. There's another tank that I... Uh, missed the kill shot. I switched to uh, APCR. We didn't even scratch them. Not having good luck with the aim, and unfortunately, I do not optimize my tanks for aim time. I, it scores 8 to 8. I optimize them for reload time and for spotting. Now the score is 8 to 10. Uh, the game is, is turning quickly. The VK is in the town, which is very rare. You want to knock those buildings down, take out that tank, and try not to get spotted. You're really punishing me here. Now I'm going to head into town for protection. There is a solid building somewhere that they can't shoot through. But I am paying attention to what's going on. If I need to move my tank to be surrounded by more buildings, I'm going to do it. Being very careful not to knock anything down, because if you knock it down, uh, it does give you a little bit of extra protection. It makes it hard for people to auto-aim on you, for example. 9 to 12. Dead. Three kills. Now there's a tank to my left that should be easy to kill. And there he is. This was not a good move for me. I should not have gone down below. Uh, they're capping our base, but the problem is we I need to uh, rush the base. And uh, unfortunately I was not able to rush the base. Try to get a lucky shot on this guy. Okay, so the score was 10 to 13. Uh, I was one of the last players. Uh, they pulled it through at the end. Uh, but the point was, I wanted to show how you could advance into the enemy territory. Uh, we went up into the north. Uh, we just, I just snuck right through the middle. Uh, I discovered that they were not well defended. My team advanced quickly. If, if I hadn't done that, they might have been a lot slower to advance in the north. We ganged up. Uh, we isolated the team, divided-conquer uh, tactic. We 
go after the SPGs. They're easy targets. We got them out of the game early. Uh, the only thing I wish I had done differently was headed to protect my base a lot faster. And you'll notice that where my allies are, we're a little bit spread out. We're not, maybe we can cover each other, but you want to regroup when you're losing.